This is the Kane Mark VI Dead Reckoning computer from 1958. It's got tons of stuff. The backside has a sliding round thing over a polar coordinate grid. And you can also spin this ring here. And on the other side, it has conversion indexes, press alt, lubes gas, lubes oil, airspeed correction, altitude correction, not, stat, dens alt, deg. This thing was made by the Kane Aero Company in St. Paul, Minnesota. I have the original illustrated instructions and practice problems and the original leather carrying case. I made a scan of the instructions on course the Kane way. Click the links down there if you want to read through it. It's pretty detailed and the previous owner seems to have really worked on it. And look at that bee! It's carrying a cane. I couldn't really find any information about the Kane Aero Company, but this device is just one among many knockoffs of the U.S. Air Force's E-6B flight computer. The E-6B was invented in the 1930s by Army scientist Philip Dalton. After the Pearl Harbor attack, the U.S. military got serious about air navigation and went all in on the E-6B. They manufactured about 400,000 of these things, and they trained every military pilot to use one. The E-6B is still used today, and there's lots of videos all over YouTube about how to use it. They even make giant ones for teachers. You can buy one of these online for $650. Still cheaper than the Curda. After the war, the military patents expired, and tons of little outfits started making their own E-6B knockoffs. Often they used some cute name that made it sound like the E-6B. This one is the Mark VI. Wait a minute. E... 6B. <laughs> Those guys. As far as I can tell, they didn't really try to improve or change it around. Basically, every pilot in America in the 1950s had been trained to use the E6B. So don't mess around with it. Just give the people what they want. To be honest, I doubt that anybody really thought of this device specifically as the Kane Mark VI. You take a glance at it, it's the E6B. This side of the machine is an elaborate spinning wheel chart that'll do lots of different computations. Around the outside is a pair of scales with logarithmic markings that make a circular slide rule so you can multiply and divide things. Stuff like if I traveled 60 miles in 30 minutes, then what was my ground speed? You line up the 60 here with the 30 here, and then this points on the outside to 12, which means 120 miles per hour. All right. There are seven other indicators that point to different places on the outer scale. These are for doing simple unit conversions. This is all kind of cute and actually extremely useful, but not all that interesting to me. What really catches my eye is the other side. A rotating screen in front of a slightly curvy grid. This side is used for calculating drift from the wind. Here's the idea. Your plane has its own speed and direction, but that interacts with the speed and direction of the wind. Maybe the wind pushes you, you go a little bit faster, maybe slower, maybe to the side or whatever. The best way to represent this mathematically is using vectors. My plane has a direction and a speed, and I represent this like an arrow. It points in the direction I'm going, and the length of the arrow is how fast I'm going. And then the wind has its own speed and direction, which we can also represent with vectors. To calculate the actual motion of the plane, you just add the two vectors together like this. So this black one here is going to be the actual speed and direction that the plane will travel. Adding these vectors mathematically is really easy if you know the x and y coordinates. You just add the x coordinates together and you add the y coordinates together. It's easy. But there's a big problem if you try to do this in real life. There's no way to measure your plane's x and y coordinates. The plane just has a compass and an airflow sensor. So you know the direction and the speed of the plane. You know, like, maybe I'm going 200 knots to the northeast. But you don't actually know these x and y directions. You know the length of the arrow, and you know the angle here. And your knowledge of the wind is the same way. You pick up the weather on the radio or something, and they say the wind is maybe 25 knots to the northwest. Okay, so the wind looks like that. And now we've got to add them up, and here we have a real problem. If I knew the x and y coordinates of everything, it'd be fine. 
but just the way the instruments work means that these vectors are always expressed in polar coordinates. It's not x, y, you just know the length and the angles. Adding up the x and the y would be easy, but adding up vectors in polar coordinates is much harder. There is a formula, but you really want to see it? All right. This is very complicated, even with an electronic calculator. My very serious adult calculator doesn't even do the arctan. I just found out about this one. I think I'm going to upgrade. I'm not happy about using this formula. To be honest, I'd rather just crash the plane. But here's where the back side of the Kane Mark VI Dead Reckoning calculator comes in. This spinning screen setup is actually a device for adding vectors in polar coordinates. Let's just try and do that example from before. So the plane's going 200 knots at 45 degrees, and the wind is going 25 knots at 315 degrees. So I guess my actual angle will end up being a little bit less than 45, and my speed will be a little bit more than 200. Let's work it out. All right, first you indicate the wind speed on the transparent screen here. Don't be alarmed, but you're actually meant to write on this thing with a pencil. The ordinary pencil eraser cleans it off pretty good. All right, so my wind is 25 knots at 315 degrees, and I'm going to mark that first on the spinning thing. First, the direction. I spin it until 315 lines up at the top. Now, there's a little green circle in the center of the screen, which marks the origin, and I'm going to draw the wind vector. It was 25 knots, so I make it have length 25 using the coordinates you can see through there. I'm starting with the origin over 150, so I'm going to draw it up to 175 because my wind speed is 25. Actually, you don't really have to draw the whole arrow. All you need is the end point. All right, now i got my wind in there. Now for the plane's velocity, I'm going to dial in my compass direction first. That's 45 degrees up top. And the speed is 200 knots, so I slide the origin to the 200. And that's about it. I can read where the mark is, and that gives me the sum of the two vectors. My speed is along the vertical lines here. It looks like about 202 knots. And the lines going across tell the angles. This says I'm going to drift 7 degrees to the left. And there you have it. My actual velocity relative to the ground will be 202 knots. And this little angle here will be 7 degrees, which means my actual compass direction will be 38 degrees. I really love the simplicity of the design. It's such a creative and simple way to add vectors that the formulas make it really hard. It's kind of great how something as complicated as this turns into just this. The legacy of the E6B and its copycats is pretty hard to overstate. Basically every pilot since World War II has been trained on the E6B right up until today. Even now when a new pilot takes the FAA written exam, here's what you can bring. A simple non-programmable calculator, a protractor, and the E6B flight computer. There was even an E6B on board the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. You gotta correct for that moon wind. It was so well regarded that they even used them on Star Trek. And this wasn't some kind of time travel thing. No, we were really supposed to believe that the E6B would still be in use in a starship in the 23rd century. But imagine my amusement when I found out you can buy a tablet app to simulate the E6B. It's kind of absurd. You know, my iPad is a computer that could easily crunch the numbers directly. But instead, somebody took the time to create a well-designed graphical app to simulate the E6B. It's a computer simulation of a mechanical object, but that object itself is made obsolete by a computer. You use a computer to make a thing that's worse than the computer. Congratulations. So why would anybody ever want this? Must be because they love the E6B. Same reason I want one of these.